Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing fantastic today. If you're a beginner photographer just starting out with photography and you can't understand why your images just doesn't look so great, this video is just the right one for you. I'll go over some elements that you should implement into your images that will make them just, you know, just bring them up to the next level and make them more professional. Um, so I'm going to divide the video up into three different parts, compositional, um, some technical uh, tips and you know settings with your camera and then finally I'll just go over some tips that I'll give you just to just you know get your image up there. Okay let's start with composition. The first basic rule that you know every photographer should know and understand from the right at the start is the rule of thirds. Now I'm really sure you should have heard from it if you're doing photography because it's like the you hear it everywhere but yeah, I'm going to go with it either way. So the rule implies that you divide your frame up into thirds. So you have a center column and then two um, columns on the on the the sides of the image, and then also horizontally divide your image up. So you have a top part, a middle part, and a bottom part. And now just think of the lines that will draw those those different um, columns. So we have two lines that's off center. Um, and then we have two lines that that goes horizontally through the image. Now the rule implies that you put your subject on these lines. So if you have a subject like this, you'll put it just, you know, just a bit off center uh, on either side on one of those lines. Or if you have a bird or something in flight, then you can also put that bird on one of these lines that is horizontal. Now in one of my, my own photo review, um, videos I go over how you should frame a living subject um, and frame it you know on based on where it is looking so I'm just going to go over that again if your subject looks left frame it to the right of the image okay oh, I think I'm the wrong way around now yeah left okay so if your subject is looking left frame it to the right of your image and if your subject looks to the right of the image frame it to the left of your image so that the subject looks into your frame you always want your subject to look into your frame to guide the viewer's eye from the subject and then they see the subject looking into the image and then your eye follows what the subject is looking at so that's just the general rule when photographing living things frame your photo to where the subject is looking if you have a bird in flight flying maybe downwards frame it on the upper upper part of your image if the bird is flying upwards frame it on the bottom part of your image always make your subject look fly move whatever it does into your image now the next step is depth and layers in your image now if you want a good image and you know this doesn't always work but in most cases you want depth in your image now this implies that you have a lot of layers so in this you know video here you have me that's in the front that's also the subject and then we have a few layers you know all of these mount these mountain uh, cliffs and stuff they all make and add layers well you could consider that only one layer so it's kind you know it's a very basic uh, image or setup but you know you can get quite complicated with this but you know always you have to have a foreground or just the subject and then the background but you know the more layers you have and the, the better you can you know make that layers um, add up to each other and complement each other the better you can implement those layers you can make them frame your subject nicely and you know just you know as I said add depth into your image now the next one is balance and that you know will kind of disagree with the rule of thirds you know rule that I give that I gave uh, at the beginning. Now this thing, this rule, that's not, you know, set and stone, but you know, it implies that you should always have balance in your image. You shouldn't just have your subject to one side. You know, you should have something at the other side of the frame that you know adds visual weight to the other side of the frame as well to just balance out your image. And I'll show an image that you know I really find just explains this balance thing quite well and I'll put that on the frame and you'll see that the tree and the moon is actually on the right side of the frame on the right side of the frame but then you can see the mountain that's actually a bigger chunk of the image on the left side 
adds visual weight to the left side of the image as well. So your subject is clearly on the right, but you have something just balancing that out to the, to the um, left of your image. Um, so this just means that you have something that adds some visual weight on the other side of the frame than your subject just to balance the image out, but this also makes sure this doesn't um, distract your viewer's eye from the main subject. And then we have the next step that is leading lines. Now, if you can use the foreground and the background and stuff and have lines leading into your subject, you know, that is great. So try to put, maybe if you have a branch or something, um, maybe try to make it face into your subject, you know, use the different ele elements that's in your image and try to compose them to, you know, lead into a subject. So this can be very um, clearly shown with um, architectural photography. So if you're photographing a bridge or something with a bunch of lights, lines or a tunnel or train tracks, anything, I'm not doing certainly nature photography now, but you know this can imply in any type of photography. Try to compose those train tracks or something to lead right to your subject. Now, this is leading lines. So try to use lines to lead your viewer's eye into your subject. And then we have the next step that is focus. Now, focus just means that you should, your image should have a focus. I mean, if I just stand here and boom, just take an image of, you know, this. Where's my subject? I don't have a focus point or something that I want my viewer to focus on and that just makes the image kind of useless. I mean, it could be a, a wonderful view, but always try to have a subject. I mean, that can mean that just put a person in your image looking to the view. Then you have a subject and then you also have the view that you wanted to show. So in any scenario, just try to have a subject in your image and yeah, if you haven't done that before in your images, this will definitely step up your images if you have a subject for your viewer to focus on. And then, talking about subject now, we get to subject separation. Now, that just means that you should try to avoid distractions from your subject. Now, as I previously said with balance, the thing you put on the other side of the frame to kind of counter your subject shouldn't draw the viewer's attention. And that thing just comes up again. Make sure that your image, your viewer isn't distracted from your main subject. Make sure your main subject is the focus of the image and you know when someone initially looks at your image there's nothing else that the viewer looks at except your subject. So make sure your subject is isolated um, and just clearly shown. So yeah, basically avoid distractions from your subject. That could also, okay, just lead to my next step, simplicity. Now simplicity means also, you know, avoiding distractions from your subject, but that can also mean taking away unnecessary stuff from your, sub, uh, from your image. Um, if you have, you know, a bunch of people in the background that you don't want there, just ask them to leave. Or in nature photography, it's more like try to uh, compose your image so that that thing that isn't really necessary can stay out of your image. So a simple, a simple image a lot of the times means a better image. Yes, you can get complicated, that's very good images, but you know, you, sometimes you don't know what, is about, what it is about professional images that just look so great, but it's so simple, but that is the thing. It's so simple and so straight to the point a beginner tries to put a lot of stuff in its image that in in his or her image that just is useless so try to you know simplify your frame as much as possible and that definitely brings me straight to the next point and that is clean up your image if you have a rock that's you know distracting your viewers i take that rock and throw it away take that um, branch that lying on the ground that's just distracting and you know take, adds an element to the image that really does nothing take that thing throw it away you don't want that in your image and it's not contributing so take it away clean up your image and then that brings me to technical tips now the first technical tip is 
make sure you're not overexposing your image. With digital photography, you should rather underexpose your image. That means uh, expose the image a bit darker. So if you look at the image, it should look a bit dark. Now this depends on your image. So if you have a bright part in your image, make sure that bright part still contains color and doesn't overexpose and clip the highlights. So yeah, that means if you have something that's a white stone or something, uh, add um, exposure compensation to your image or uh, bring your shutter speed down or just bring your exposure down. If you don't know how to do that, check out my camera basics video. I'll link it up here. So make sure your highlights on clip and they are protected. Now that brings me to the next one. If you have a subject with an eye that's a living animal, anything with eyes, make sure the eye is the part that you're trying to keep focus. Now I know that's very odd and most of the time you're just trying to keep your um, focus on the subject, especially with cheaper cameras with just big autofocus spots. I mean that just means putting it on the actual animal. But you know, the, the better you can do to try to keep the eye in focus, especially if you're doing a headshot of an animal or anything, um, at the end you should try to keep the eye of, the, of, of your subject and make that the focus point and keep your autofocus or your just manual focusing, keep the eye in focus. And that also means the closest eye to the camera. So focus on the closest eye to the camera. And then also if you focus, uh, photographing something living that thing should focus uh, should face you um, please don't you know shoot an animal from behind it's useless and it creates a kind of unaccepting feeling in the viewer if you're photographing something and it faces away so always make your subject uh, face towards you when you're taking an image and then finally I'm going to get to a few tips the first one is now if if you're trying to improve your photography, find a few photographers that you really love and go look at their work. Um, see why their images are great and analyze it. See, okay, he has a subject and there's nothing distracting your viewers are from the subject. The subject is um, composed not in the middle but rather to one of the thirds. You know, all the rules that I mentioned above, you know, find why that image makes a good image maybe it's very simple you know you understand try to analyze it and find what makes that image great and then also try to learn from it and apply it into your own implement it into your own images and then also the next step that goes with with that one is consume great content and then you will you know unconsciously develop a great taste for for nice images so if you're looking at a bunch of great videos of other people great images you will learn yourself to just you know you, you won't really notice it but your brain will automatically know what you like and what you should implement in your own image that you like and that you've seen before uh, you won't really notice this but you know as i said it subconsciously will just develop a great taste okay so that's my video uh, implement these steps into your own work and you'll definitely see a difference i'll see you in the next one have fun shooting